Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, it's me, Ivan Yosifov. And uh, welcome to this Python tutorial where we'll be learning how to scrape data from uh, websites and how to convert this data into a PDF file. So pretty much what we'll be doing is that we'll be scraping articles from Life Science and we'll convert them into PDFs. So let me grab an article. I'll paste the URL and we'll be creating this thing. And when I scrape it, we'll get the text, the author, the intro, images, text, also if there are any headings. I don't think there are any headings in this article. Uh, let me try with another one. Uh, strange news. Okay, Bigfoot. Let me copy this thing. I'll paste the URL here, scrape it. And there we have it. We've got the title, we've got the author, we've got the images. And the good thing about it is that I can download this as a PDF. I'm not going to save it, I'll just open it in Firefox. But here we can see it. We've got the title, we've got the author, we've got the uh, intro, all the images are here, here are the headings. And in the end I guess there are some links. Okay. When we're scraping the text from the articles, we're not going to be uh, using the links. We'll scrape the links as text. So links are not going to be clickable in the PDF that we generate. So these links will just be as text. <coughs> and uh, this thing, this service, will work for any article from Life Science. And if you guys have never used Life Science, it has like really amazing articles. You can learn a lot about uh, about the Earth, about health, space, uh, hist uh, history, nature. There are, there are a lot of stuff here. Technology. <coughs> anyway, so yes, this is what we'll be doing. Uh, we'll be scraping these articles, convert them as PDF, and you can save them for uh, future reference. Okay, so uh, I believe that's it. Uh, now let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start by creating a new folder and I'll call it scraper PDF. Now I'm going to open the folder and uh, inside of here I'll open the command prompt and I'm using a, a Windows command prompt but um, in a minute I'll show you how to use the Linux if you're using Linux. Now before we start uh, one thing that I want to do and you don't have to do it if you don't want to but usually when I'm creating projects I like to create a virtual environment uh, for each project. That means uh, every folder that I create, every project that I create, I want to make it into a virtual environment. So anything that I do inside of the folder, it stays inside of the folder. For example, in Python, we'll be using a number of packages that we need to install. And when I install those packages, I want them to, to install them locally for the folder. I don't want to install them globally, because with pip install, and the name of the package, this command will install the package globally. So I can access that package from every project. And I don't want to do that. I want to ins install the package locally for that, for that, for that uh, folder. So only that folder has access to that package. And then if I need to use it in a, in a different folder, I'll create an environment there and then I will uh, install it there. 
Now, in order to create a virtual environment in Python for uh, your project, we're going to install a package called virtual env. And as you see, I'm installing this package uh, globally. So let me run this command. And uh, I already have it installed, so it says requirement already satisfied. Now, <coughs> Using this package, virtual env, I can create a virtual environment for that folder. Virtual env, and then you give the name of the virtual environment. And by default, many people call it just venv, which is, you know, virtual environment. So let me run this command. <coughs> And you will see that you know this inf information that virtual environment has been created. Now, when I check what's inside of this folder, inside of this folder I have this other folder called VNV, and here it is. Now, in order to activate this this uh, virtual environment, I'm gonna call I'm gonna run VNV scripts activate and this activate is actually a here inside of the scripts it's a bat file that will activate the virtual environment for us so if I run it you will see in front of the uh, working directory I have this VNV which means that this uh, virtual environment is right now activated so anything any commands that I run inside of here will be local to that folder because this folder is act, acts like a container for everything that's inside of it so when I install packages using pip install now this command will not install global in the packages it will install them locally for this environment and I think it's a a better way to to create your projects so that all the packages are local to uh, the project you're working on. Now again if you don't want to use virtual environment you can just run pip install and uh, the, the packages I'll show you right now but just so you know I'm using virtual environment and if you don't use it nothing will change for you. There will be no errors or stuff like that. You'll just be installing stuff globally. Anyway, so let's install the packages that we'll be using. And actually, let me show you something. Pip. If you run this command, this command will show us all the packages that are installed right now. And if I run this command, you'll see there is nothing because we haven't installed any packages. So uh, let's start by installing the packages that we'll be using. Uh, so. First of all, we'll install the requests library and the beautiful soup. Beautiful soup for. So these two packages will be used for uh, connecting to the URL and uh, scraping the data. Okay. We're gonna also install the pillow package that allows us to work with images. We'll install the fpdf package and this will allow us to convert to create PDF files and write to them. And lastly we'll install the flask package and flask allows us to create a user interface user you know, websites and user interface uh, using uh, Python it's very easy to use and we'll do that in the end of the in the end of the project okay now if I run pip freeze you'll see there are a number of packages that have been installed for this environment his beautiful soup 4 his flask fpdf the pillow module and the requests module 
you also see we have some other packages and some of these packages they are uh, part of the they're dependent on the package that we already installed for example flask needs this this thing uh, this thing this thing so in these packages they, they need they also installed additional packages because they depend on them uh, <coughs> now again uh, if you're not using a virtual environment these packages will be installed globally so every project that you create we have access to them I just it's a personal preference I just wanna I usually want to do like a virtual environment and, and then install my packages now uh, in order to deactivate to get out of the this uh, virtual environment you can either close the command prompt or you can write vnv scripts and this uh, deactivate.bat and when you run this you'll see there is no more uh, virtual environment in front of the uh, working directory path so we have successfully deactivated the virtual environment <coughs> now let me show you how to activate and deactivate virtual environment using Linux so uh, I have this git bash terminal which is a Linux terminal and we can see we have the the folder now for Linux in order to activate the virtual environment you need to run source uh, VNV scripts activate so for Windows you just run this command but for Linux you need to write source and then the the, the path to the file activate so when I run this you'll see the virtual environment is already created and the same command work here like in Windows pip freeze for example to show the installed packages and yeah here are all the packages that are installed uh, in order to deactivate this uh, in, in the in the Linux terminal you just run uh, was it deactivate deactivate and when you run it you'll see the virtual environment is no longer present so this is for the Linux uh, if you're using uh, Linux this is how you activate and deactivate the virtual environment now that being said I'll continue using the Windows command prompt but there should be no difference if you're using Mac or Linux <coughs> okay so let's go ahead and get started now I'm gonna create a file here called main.py and I create a folder I'll create a file called main.py and inside of this file we'll be writing the logic of our program and uh, I'll be using I'll be using the sublime text editor but uh, you can use whatever editor you'd like to use you can use uh, PyCharm or Visual Studio Code or even Notepad++ Notepad++ you're, you're free to use whatever you want I'm just using this uh, right now so the first thing we want to do here in the main in the main.py file is to uh, import the packages that we installed so I'll start by importing two packages that that are part of Python OS and Shutil or Shutil not sure how it's pronounced we'll be, we'll be using these packages when we're working with uh, files on the on the file system <coughs> and when we get to these packages I'll explain them uh, we need to import the requests package we'll use this package to make connection to the URLs uh, we also import the beautiful soup so beautiful soup is part of this ps4 package 
and that's why we need to import it like that from BS4, import beautiful soup and we'll give it an alias or a nickname so as not to write beautiful soup we can just write BS which is abbreviation for beautiful soup uh, we also need to import our image manipulation library and uh, I know we installed pillow but in order to import the pillow library we need to use it uh, we need to use this pill package so it's part of the pill package from pill import image and we'll use this uh, module to get the dimensions of the images of course we need to import the pdf fpdf library and we'll be using this library to create PDFs and also to manipulate them and uh, a little bit later I'll also import the flask library but uh, we'll do that at the end of the project I don't wanna confuse you too much right now so let's just see how to incorporate these packages and when this script is working we'll convert it into a web interface using the flask module and then I'll import it in here Okay, so let me search for life science. So uh, I'm gonna be using with a uh, with a uh, article here. So I'll search it, and I'll search dinosaurs. And there is a really good article called uh, Brief History of Dinosaurs. So this is the URL and uh, we'll be testing our script using this article and uh, we'll be, as you see it's quite a lengthy article, there's a lot of text, there are a couple of images, but uh, we'll be learning how to extract all that data and a little bit later convert it into a, uh, into a PDF. So in order to scrape it, I'll save that URL inside of a variable called URL. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to create a connection to this URL. I need to, because I need to extract all the data from that URL. And we do that using the requests module. So request has a method called get and we pass the URL. Now this thing will return a response. And uh, we can check what is the response. Status code. So the response status code will return us the status code of the of, of the response of the response naturally. And what we want to get is 200, because 200 means that everything is fine. Now, in order to run this file, actually put it over here. So in order to run this file, I'll, I'll run it using python main.py and we're getting 200 so this is the status code of this URL which means we are reaching it there, there are no problems and usually this is the response code you want to get from from URLs now <coughs> currently uh, this requests.get when it reached the server and asked for this the content of this uh, URL it will identify it's, itself as a bot or as a script so it's pretty much telling the server hey I'm, I'm a script give me this uh, the, the content of this URL and some websites especially sites like uh, e-commerce websites they would usually block uh, requests from scripts or from bots so what we need to do is uh, this is not the case here but I'm just gonna show it to you um, if you wanna uh, 
how should I say it? If you want to impersonate a browser, if you want to uh, say to the server, hey, I'm a browser, give me the content, what you need to do is you need to open any page. It, it really doesn't matter what page. Uh, then click F12, which will open the... Uh, where is that? Or if there is an inspect option, you can use the inspect option. And it will open this... Uh, uh, console at the end of the browser and you need to look at that network tab and you need to make sure that this HTML is selected HTML will give you the all the the documents that are loaded so currently it doesn't show anything because I need to reload the page but if I reload the page you see I get this life science and actually do you see that status code 200? This is the same status code that we got, which means everything is fine. Now, if I click this, uh, this file that we are requesting, and here you have these headers, and these are the, these are the headers of your browser. So this is, uh, this is what you are getting, the response headers. And if you scroll a little bit down there, the requests. So these are the requests that the browser is sending to the server. And if you scroll a little bit down here, you have this user agent uh, string. And you need to copy this string. And we'll say it as headers. And this needs to be passed as a dictionary. So this headers dictionary has a key of user agent and value of uh, this is the user agent string from my browser. So for your browser it will probably be different if you're using Firefox or Chrome or uh, some other browser this thing will most probably be different to you. But uh, when we are passing this user agent string to the request and we actually need to pass it here so this thing will tell the server hey I'm a browser give me the content and this is how you know uh, the server will say oh it's a browser so I'll give you the content you do not identify yourself as a, as a script you identify yourself as a browser and uh, a little bit later we'll be doing other projects we'll be, where we'll be scraping e-commerce websites and you'll see that some websites they don't give you the content unless you identify yourself as a browser. They will block your request if you do not identify yourself as a browser. <coughs> okay, so if I run this thing again, I'll get the same content. Now this uh, domain, life science, it doesn't care where you're a browser or a, or, or a script, they'll, they'll give you the information. So this is just for future reference. If you want to know how to get your user agent string, this is and then pass it to the request.get. Okay, uh, enough about this. So I'll delete this. Now when you get this response, now let me show you how it will look. So response.content will will give you the HTML of, of this of this page. So if I run it, uh, did I run it? Oh, I didn't save it. Okay. Okay, so and this is the response of the page and it all looks kind of jumbled because there's a lot of scripts and everything is uh, mashed together. Uh, so what we want to do, should let me just clear everything. And I just noticed I didn't activate the virtual environment. So let me do it really quick. Uh, okay. So now my virtual environment is activated. Uh, now 
what we want to do is I want to convert this HTML into a into an object that I can easily search, filter, and extract information from it. And this is where we'll be using this uh, beautiful soup module. So I'll convert this HTML into a soup. So let me explain what's going on. So the beautiful soup module accepts two parameters. One is the HTML. So this is how we get the HTML from this uh, response. And the second parameter is the parser. So the parser is this uh, is what converts this HTML content into something that beautiful soup can easily uh, search or filter or traverse or whatever you want to do. And we save it as a soup. So uh, this soup right now contains information that is easily uh, we, can, we can easily search it. We can easily extract what we want to find. <coughs> okay. So first thing we want to do. So the first thing we want to do is grab the, the title, uh, the title of this article. Now in order to grab the title, I'll inspect it by right clicking on the title and click inspect. And you'll see it's part of an h1 tag. Now in order to get the tags, uh, I'm going to these tags are right now in this article and if I highlight it uh, you'll see the whole article is highlighted so uh, what I want to do is I want to get this, uh, this this article now in order to get the article you'll see that uh, the tag is article and it has a class of news article so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this news article and here in the search HTML, I'll press dot, which stands for class, and paste news article. And I'll see that the news article is, I can find it in two places in the, in this document. The one place is the HTML, the, I mean the CSS, and the other one is the tag. So this means that I can search for this news article inside of this soup. And how do I do that? So I'll save it in an article variable. Now soup has a method called find. And the find method will always return a single item. And I know that there's only one article with the class of news article, so I'm gonna use that method. This will return a single element from the soup or from this HTML uh, document. So I need to say what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an article tag. And the second parameters are, uh, they are all actually optional. You can pass attributes. Now this article, as you see, has a class of news article. So here I can say, I'm looking for a class called news article. And so uh, the find method will search for a specific tag with specific attributes in this in this case, we want an article that has a class of news article. Now, when I print the article and run it here, uh, here I'm getting this this article, and if we scroll a little bit to the oh. Yeah, okay. Wait, is it getting the article? Yeah. So here we're running the command and it says article. And it includes everything that is part of this article. And you see there's a lot of stuff that we're getting. But at the very end, it's the closing tag of the article. So everything inside of this article, we're getting it using this command. Now, uh, the 
first thing we want to get is the title. So this title is part of the article and we'll be looking for an h1 uh, tag. And like you, as you see, the h1 doesn't have any attributes. So there are no classes, there are no IDs and stuff like that. Uh, now to get the title, we're not going to be using, we're not going to be searching inside of the soup. We're going to be searching inside of the article because we've already located our article and we'll be searching inside of the article because there's no need to search in the whole soup. We already have the article tag. And again, we're going to use the find method because find will return a single uh, a single element. We'll use an H1. And when I run the this thing, here I'm getting the the element. Now it will return the element including the opening and the closing text and in this case we want to get only the text so we can pass get text I'll save it I'll run it and we get only the, the text so the title is ready we've already, we've already got the text of the, of the, of the article okay uh, next thing we want to get is the author. So in order to get the author, I'm going to right click the author, click inspect, and you will see I get this uh, span, but uh, the tag above it is, a, is an anchor, a link, and the tag above it is a span with a class of by author. And let me search this by author and see how many times I can find it inside of this. And there are 12 uh, mentions of this class. So one of them is in inside of the CSS. The other one is inside of the article. And there are also other by authors, but uh, they are part of different uh, they're also inside of articles, but they're not inside of our articles because at the end here You can you see these ones. There's some previews of other articles with uh, with uh, Authors so they're inside of articles, but not inside of articles with a class of With a class of news article so inside of the news article I have only one span with a class of by author so I'm going to use this. Uh, I'm going to use this to, to get the author. So again, I'm using the set of the article. Now, <clears throat> if I use find, and was that a span? I, yeah, it's a span of class by author. So I'm looking for a span, and I want the class to be by author now I'm going to run this and I have the span now I don't want the, all these tags I want just the text so just like we did with the title I'm going to pass get text run it again and I have this uh, the author of the article. Now you'll see I also have this uh, white space before and after. And this is like you see this, this white space here. So in order to get rid of this white space, I'm gonna say after get text dot strip. Now strip is a Python function that strips white space, white space from the beginning and the end of the text. So if I save it, and if I run it again, I just get the text. <coughs> now, one thing to know is that sometimes you have more than one authors. So if you have more than one authors, 
this this line will get just the first one because if find finds more than one it will return you only the first one and in this case we don't want to get the first one uh, we want to get we want to get uh, all of them so inside of instead of find I'll use find all so inside of the articles find all spans with the class of uh, by author and we can not run get text because this will return an, an array an array of tags and you, you cannot uh, run get text and strip on arrays so let me actually show you what this will return if I run it I'll get a, an array of a single element now if I had a second author it will be there'll be a comma and there'll be a second tag here so once I get the uh, all the authors because uh, some articles have one author but some have two or three authors uh, in order to get the authors I'm gonna <coughs> uh, convert so like I said authors actually let, let's call it no let's keep it singular so this will be an array and what I want to do is I want to convert uh, this array into a string into strings so okay so actually let's call this authors and uh, <coughs> we'll run a for loop for author authors and just print get Uh, oh, I, I forgot the closing. Okay. <coughs> okay. So we're gonna get the authors inside of this text. Let's call this authors author tags. And then let's just uh, author. plus equals author tag and we'll do something like that <coughs> uh, okay let's run this thing again uh, tag for string Oh, I'm using author and author here. Um, okay, let's call them authors. Okay. So what we are doing is we're getting all the tags, and this is an array of all the tags, and then we loop through all the through that every element in that array, and we're getting the the text we're removing the empty lines and we're adding it to a string of authors so if there are more than one authors it will be author 1 space author 2 space author 3 etc <coughs> so these authors will contain the authors of the article and some articles have one authors and some have more but this is pretty much what we're doing here okay Now the next thing we want to get is this intro text.
So again, I'm gonna right click it, inspect, and I'll have this P with a class of strap line. And let me see how many times we can find it inside of the article. So we can find it once inside of the CSS. There's a span somewhere here with a class of strap line. And then we have a paragraph. So we'll be looking for a paragraph with a class of strap line, strap line inside of the articles inside of the article. <coughs> so I'll call it intro, and we'll look inside of the article. Again, we'll find a paragraph, and for the attributes, we're looking for a class of strap line. And again, we want to get the text. And for good measure, we'll pass the strip. Uh, and also for the title, we can also pass the strip, just in case. So let's see if we get the end intro. <coughs> and there we have it. Here's the intro. Here's the intro. Now, the next thing is we need to get the we need to get all the images and all the text inside of the article. Now, as you see, some images have these captions. We don't we don't want to get these. We just want the images. We don't want these captions. So here is another caption. We don't want it. We, we just want to get the, the, the image. Now this one uh, thing that I noticed when I was doing this project is that this first image is... Actually, let me show you. If I inspect it... So here's the image tag, which is inside of the picture tag. Uh, which is inside of this tag you see so so here is the image tag uh, wait where was it okay so this image tag inside of is inside is part of the article so here is the whole article it contains this image tag which is in here but the article body so I'm hovering the article body and then the image tag and you'll see that this image is not part of part of the article body so here's the article body so this is the article body but this image is not part of the article body and I don't know why but some uh, articles have the first image part of the article body and some have the image outside of the article body because inside of the article body will be scraping everything and if the this image is not part of the article body we're not getting the first image and we want to get the first image so what we need to do uh, here in, uh, inside of this this uh, this this hero image if the if the image is outside of the article body it's in a diff of class hero image actually it's over here see it's an image of class hero image so inside of the <coughs> inside of the uh, article we need to see if there is a hero image and if there is if there is we need to get this image so let's actually uh, first get uh, the image. Uh, so I'll call it image equals uh, article find img. So here's the image, image with the class of hero image. And actually, let me see if we get this. How many times we get this hero image? So here's in the CSS. 
another CSS, another CSS, and then we have it as a, a source. Here's in the source, another source, and here's the image. So I'm safe to assume that inside of the, if I look for an image with a class of hero image, I'll get this image. Image of class hero image. Now, this will return the whole image element. Now, for the, as you know, images have this source attribute, so I need to get this attribute of the image. Now, if you hover over the source attribute, it will show you this the preview of the image. And if I copy this and paste it here, we'll get this small image. Now I don't want the small image. I want to. I want to get the bigger, the biggest image. And uh, here we're getting the small image because it's uh, resizing it uh, according to the browser. Now, if you see this uh, image tag besides the source, it also has something called uh, data original moss. Now, if I copy this thing, so the value of this. So here, I'm copying this, and if I paste it, I'll get a bigger image. So here's the original image, here's the scaled down version of the image. And I want to get the original image. I don't want to get this one, because later if I try to uh, make it bigger, it will get all pixelated and stuff. So I'm going to get the, the, the value from this data original moss now in order to get the value of an attribute what I need to do is here inside of uh, inside of these brackets I need to pass the value of the uh, not the value the key of the value I want to get so in this case, I want to get the value of data original MOS, and let me see what that will will return. And I'm getting this string, which is this one. So it's the same. Okay, it's the same. So once again, article find image. This will return the the tag. And when I pass this, uh, these brackets, uh, I can get values of specific keys. So if I want to get the source, I'll pass here SRC. If I want to get uh, sizes, I will pass sizes. But in this case, I want to get the data original MOS. Now, <coughs> like I said, here we have a picture that is outside of the article body. So here's the article body, and uh, in a minute we'll start scraping the article body text and pictures. But if the picture is not in the article body, we want to get it. But if the picture is not is inside of is not inside of the, I mean if the picture is inside of the article body. This will return an error because uh, Python will try to find an image with a class of hero image. It won't find it. This will return none. And then we're trying to access uh, an attribute of none. So this will return an error. So that's why I'm going to put this inside of a try except block. So if this returns an error, we'll just pass. This means don't do anything. So if there is an image inside of the header, we'll get it. But if this image does not exist here inside of the header, just continue as if nothing has ever happened. So that's why we're putting this inside of a try except block. Okay. So last, we need to extract all the text 
all the text inside of the article body all these headings all these images and if I scroll a little bit down here we have list items so inside of the article body I want to extract these four elements list items headings paragraphs and images if there are any of course so uh, if I inspect this we'll, we'll see that all the text is inside of p tags so here's all the here's the article so inside of the article body I want to get all the p tags these are I believe heading freeze so all p tags all heading freeze all images and at the end we have these d tags so here they are lead tags so we want to grab all these elements <coughs> but uh, first of all let me just get the the, the, the article body now the article body is, is, is inside of the article so we'll find and it was a, a diff I believe yeah diff with an ID of article body okay so the tag we're looking for is a diff tag and for attributes we'll be using this article body so it's an ID, it's not a class, it's an ID of class article body. Okie dokie. So next thing, uh, now we already use here find all to get all spans of the authors. Now find all, the first parameter that you pass to the find all could be a, 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 an element, the string of an element, but we can also pass an array of elements we want to search. So in this case, uh, I'll, I'll call them tags. What kind of tags am I looking for the article inside of the article body? Find, and I'll use find all because I'm gonna look for more than one, one more than one tags. Now, instead of passing P, this will find all the P's, but I don't want all the P's, I want all the P's, all the heading frees, all the images, and all LIs. So, in instead of writing it like this way, I'll, I'll give it an array of tags to search for. So, find the P's, find the heading frees, uh, find images, and, uh, and li LIs, list items. So these are all the tags I'm searching inside of the article body and it will return me a list of all these tags. Okay, let me print uh, uh, for tag in tags. Now, let me actually print right now all the, all the p tags. Uh, now, in order to print only the p tags, I can check what is the element inside of this array. So, print tag name. Now, tag name will give me the name of the element. So, in this case, it will return either p, h3, img, or li. So, if I run it, and I have all the tags P, heading free, image, and the last three are LIs. And I know that because the last three ones are LIs. And before that, we have an H3. So take this H3, LI, LI, LI. Okay, now we need to clean actually these ones um, because they're not exactly like that. So let's start with the P tags. Now, if tag name is a P, 
So what do we want to do here? Huh. Okay. If tag name is a P, uh, what do we want to do this? What do you, what do you want to do? Now let me actually print it for now. Uh, tag get text and let's let's run strip. So if the tag is a p tag, print the text of the p tag. So let's see what this what this is going to give us. Let me clear. Okay. Let's scroll to the top. And actually, you know, let me add a empty line at the end. Uh, oh, did I close it? Sorry about that. So these are all the p tags, and uh, you guys are gonna notice some things that we don't want. So here's a tag. So here's a paragraph, empty line, paragraph, empty line. Now here we have a paragraph, empty line, another empty line, another empty line. So some of the p tags are empty, and for example, we have this some dinosauromorphs and if I scroll a little bit here you can hear you can see this one so this is the paragraph and here we have an empty p tag which is so this picture is, is inside of a empty p tag so there is no content inside of this p tag so we are getting an empty paragraphs empty paragraph tags so we don't want these empty paragraph tags we want to remove them from the uh, we want to remove them so <coughs> in order to do that we need to get the text of the p tag so so p text will contain the text of the p tag and then we can check if length of p text is greater than zero, print the text. Now if I clear the terminal and run it again, you will see that we don't have empty uh, empty p tags. We have a paragraph and the empty line that we we added. Okay. Now another thing you you might notice is we have this related. So we have these paragraphs that start with related. Uh, I believe there were a couple of more. Anyway. <coughs> okay, so in this article we have only one, but in other articles there are more of these related. And I don't want these related uh, paragraphs, so I need to remove them from the. I need to remove them from the text. <coughs> <coughs> so here, when we're checking for the length, we want the length to be greater than zero, so it's not an empty. And we want the p text. And there is a function in Python called starts with. Related. In this case, and not. So if the paragraph is not empty, 
and the paragraph does not start with related then we want to print it so here's the related so one two three four the fifth paragraph is related if I clear it and run it again and go to the top one two three four and the fifth one is gone so we get rid of this related and some articles have more than one related text so in this way we are we're just removing these ones because we don't need them now <clears throat> there's also one other thing which I believe is not present in this article but let me open a new one uh, some articles oh they taste related so we're getting rid of all these ones okay so some articles have this related content and they just give links to other articles and I don't want paragraphs with this related content so let me inspect this thing and you see we have these paragraphs but um, the way we have written our logic so far we'll be getting this this text so we're getting this text and I don't want them so what I want to do is I want to check for the parent of every p tag and if the parent of a p tag has a class that contains fancy because all, all of these are inside of some fancy box stuff so if the parent of a p tag has a fancy has a fancy name inside of the class its class name I don't want to get it so how do we do that uh, here we're gonna write another uh, another condition and uh, so pretty much what we wanna do uh, so I'm gonna get the parent of the tag so this so if this is a p tag I'll get the parent of the tag which in this case will be a div tag and then I wanna get the class so remember with this brackets we're getting the value of an attribute so just like here we get the value of the data original MOS here we're getting the value of the class so this will return fancy box body in, in our case because the parent of these p tags these three p tags have a parent called diff with a class of fancy box <clears throat> now this will return a list of all the classes and inside of them I want to find if they contain fancy because as you see they, they have this fancy uh, th this is the name of the class fancy and then I want to make sure it's minus one so if the class if the values of this class is not present that means I, I want to get it uh, if they find fancy this will not be minus one this will be zero or one or two or something like that now this class actually let me write the whole thing here and I apologize if this seems a little bit uh, if this seems a little bit kind of complex uh, we can write inside of a loop but I decided to create a single line so what we're doing now uh, it all starts from here so here we're getting the values of the parent of the parent of this tag of the p tag so this thing will return an array of classes and what I do is I join because these are separate values inside of the array I convert this array into a string so the string will be all the elements will be divided using a comma and then I, will, I search inside of this string for the value of fancy and if I cannot find this fancy value 
I get the tag. So that means the P is not part of a diff with a class of fancy. Okay, I know that was a lot, but uh, pretty much we're making sure that we do not get paragraphs that has the class that whose parents have a class of fancy. <coughs> okay, uh, and in this article that we are testing, we don't have this related content, but in many other articles you have this related content. So we just want to get rid of all this. We, we don't want this. We want to uh, ignore them. Okay, now, uh, so if the the tag is a paragraph, we want to make sure that the paragraph is not empty, the paragraph does not start with related, and the paragraph doesn't have a parent who has a, which has a class name of fancy. Okay, now, what if the tag name is on heading 3? So remember, we're getting paragraphs, heading frees, images, and lists. So if the tag name is a heading free, what do we want to do? Well, for the heading freeze, there isn't much we can do. We're just getting the we're just getting the text. That's all. So print uh, tag get text strip. And let me just comment this thing. So let's see if we're gonna get all the so these are the heading freeze. All the heading freeze inside of the article. And it, it looks nice. I I'm not gonna check them, but I, I think everything is fine. L if tag name equals li. Now remember at the end of the article we have three allies over here <coughs> so just like uh, just like the h phrase we can do this thing and let me comment this thing and see if we're gonna get the allies <coughs> and there they are one two Free. Okay, these are done. And last, elif tag name equals img. Now, if it's an image, we pretty much need to do the same that we did here. Because these images, if you inspect them, The inside of an image, <coughs> but again the the source will give you. Actually, they give this missing image SVG. Uh, so we need to get this data original MOS. So we need this the attribute of the data original MOS value. So I'm going to copy this thing uh, and let me just print it tag uh, and this is what we want to get so I believe there are four images here one two three four so here are the the URLs of the images so if I get the last one is this bird and here we get the bird this is the original image Okay, <coughs> so this tank is uh, working great. <coughs> this thing is working great, but uh, when we are converting all that text into a PDF, uh, we need to actually we need to make this inside of a function that will return all that information so that the PDF can use it. And uh, the PDF 
when we're creating the this PDF file, we need to know uh, if the text is a H3, if it's a heading, if it's a paragraph, if it's a LI. So this way, if I print all these things, So here's all the thing. So there are allies, there are headings, there are paragraphs, there are image URLs. So the PDF needs to know if these are headings, if these are paragraphs, if they are uh, allies, etc. <coughs> So before we do that, I'm going to convert this thing first into a function. Open this thing. So uh, <coughs> we're going to create a function called scrape data. And this will accept a URL. I will place all of this. I'll, I'll tab it so that it's part of the this scrape data URL. So this scrape data will accept a URL. It will scrape all the information, and then it needs to return that data. So I want this function to accept as an input the URL, and then return the data as a list of dictionary values. So I want for example, the title to be a dictionary value, the authors to be a dictionary value, the intro to be a dictionary value, and all of these will be part of a, a list. And then the PDF will use that list to create, uh, the PDF function will use that list to create a PDF file. So uh, currently we're not returning anything from this function. So uh, here I'm going to create uh, a list called empty list called data and then I will add these to the list so here when I'm getting the title I will append the title so I will create a, a dictionary uh, a dictionary with the key of title and the value will be the, this this title. So I'll do the same for the authors. Authors, and I'm sorry, this should be now. Uh, authors. So this is the key. This is the value. I'll do the same thing for the intro. Key and value. <coughs> now for this image, I'll put it inside of here. And again, some articles have the first image inside of the inside of the body, in, inside of the article body, so this will not be executed. Okay, and for the text instead of printing the text, I will add the text here. So, uh, data append, it will be P, a paragraph, and I'll pass the P text here. Append, I'll pass, uh, this will be a heading free. <coughs> So the heading free and the value of the heading free, and I'll use the same thing here for the li. Li. And for the image, I'll 
it will be an image and we are passing the URL of the image so after we have get this so I will return data so data will be a list of dictionary items so let me print scrape data and pass the URL <coughs> uh, so if I run it and there we have it we have an array and here's the first one title so this is the key this is the value authors here are the authors here's the intro here's our first image and then we start paragraph and the good thing is that they all uh, they're all in order oh did I close it again Okay, we are, I would say, halfway done with this thing. Now, <coughs> uh, what we need to do right now is we need to create a PDF function that will convert the data returned from scraped data into a PDF file. Uh, in order to do that, we need to uh, we need to take care of the images because. Currently, the images are saved as uh, as URLs, and if I pass a URL to a P to the PDF file, it will just print it as a, a string, a URL. So I need to get these images, which means I need to download these images. Uh, <coughs> so I'm going to create a function that will download the images and then I will use this function in the PDF because uh, the PDF will use that function will use the function to get all the images and then place them inside of the inside of the PDF uh, and I'll call it download images now again we need to pass the data uh, and this data will be most of the time from the scrape data because I'll get the URLs from the scrape data and we also need to name to give it a folder name so where do we want to uh, where do we want to save the images and pretty much what I want to do is I want to create a, a file called images that will call, contain all the images downloaded for the PDF and for this thing maybe uh, no just leave it at that okay <coughs> so here I'll create a URLs I'll create an empty list of URLs And then I need to iterate over the data array and check if the <coughs> if the item is an image. If item get image, so if the key of the item is an image, and remember inside of data we have img p for paragraphs h three but in this case we're looking for images so all the values all the keys with images i want to add them item get img so this is how we're getting the value of the key and this is how we're checking the key if the key is an image get the value and put it inside of the urls 
So we want to grab all the URLs of the images and place them in this um, in this list. <coughs> now, I need to create a folder name with the one that is with the name I pass, and here is where I'm going to use this this OS module, which is part of Python. So. So what we are doing here, actually let me add some comments because I completely forgot, uh, get all URLs create folder for images. So what we are do doing is we are checking if a folder with a specified folder name exists. And if that folder doesn't exist, create it. So we are creating pretty much a folder using Python. So instead of coming here and doing new folder, we are using this from, from our code. So if the folder with this specified folder doesn't exist, Create it. This is just the Python way of creating these images. So we have the URLs, we have the folder. Now we need to download the images. So I need to go over all these images. <coughs> Download images in folder. Now remember here when we are scraping the data we're using this response and I mean we're using this request get URL so here we're scraping a URL of, of uh, a URL that contains text images but the URLs of the image is pretty much the same so we'll be using the same uh, the same that we'll use it in the same way so response will be requests get URL just like we did here. So response get URL. We're not going to be passing headers. We're just getting the images here. Now in order to save the image, so you see how these these images they have these. Uh, Actually, let me get it. So, for example, for this image, this image, so this is the name of the image, and this is what I want to get. Because when I save the image, I want to save it with that same name. So, inside of my folder, I want to have images that are like that. So, in order to get this image, I need to get the name of the image first from this response. I mean, it's, it's also part of the URL. So this URL contains the whole URL including the image name. So I will split it uh, by the slash. So, so here's a slash, here's another slash. So I'm splitting all this, all this image, all, all this URL I'm splitting it by the slash here and I need to get the last value from this array so split will contain an, uh, an array and in order to get the last one I'll type minus one so this will get the last value so this will get the image name so this is the image name that I'm gonna use when I'm saving the image now in order to save the image uh, we'll use the open function, which is part of Python, and here we need to pass the 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 path to the image. Now the path to the image will contain the folder and the its and the image name. And in order to concatenate the folder name, so in order to concatenate this folder name with this image name, we're going to use the 
os path join so this is the first parameter this is the way we want to save it and the second parameter is how we want to save it and this is for binary format because images are not text images so this is write binary so we want to save it as a binary as file and then file write and then we have the response content so response content will return the HTML but because this uh, image it will return the, the, the image so we're getting the image here and we are writing it to a file with that name inside of that folder as a binary file and this is how we download the images uh, <coughs> we can actually check if this function is working so let's run data scrape data and we'll pass the URL and then we'll call download images and pass the data so if I run this I shouldn't get anything here python main.py actually let me open this folder so let's see if this will create the folder called images oh we didn't pass the, f the name of the folder so download images accepts the data and also the folder name in this case I want to call it images so let's run it again and there we have it images now if I open images I have all the uh, images that I downloaded from that article and there are four images and this what five images there are five images and I'm getting them with their uh, extensions uh, I mean with their the, the names okay so I know this thing is working uh, so now what I need to do I need to create the PDF file <coughs> okay let me like that <coughs> uh, I'll call it create PDF now the PDF will accept the data so it needs to, to get the data from the scrape data function and then iterate over all the items inside of it and convert them into a PDF uh, <coughs> and actually here we'll give it folder name rel equals images and before we can do anything actually here we're gonna call the download images we'll pass the data and the folder name so the first thing that create PDF will do will download the images the scraped images because we need to have them as files not just as uh, URLs so the create PDF uh, function will download the images and then start creating the the, <coughs> the PDF itself now in order to use the PDF uh, we need to create a PDF F, F, P, D, F. So we're using this package here. This package. So we're creating a PDF variable, and the uh, FPDF accepts a couple of parameters. The first one is orientation, and this will be which is for portrait mode so we have portrait and landscape in this case we want to be a portrait mode the units will be points and the format will be A4 
Now, before we continue, guys, uh, for some weird reason, uh, when we're creating PDFs, uh, I'm actually not exactly sure what was the problem, but sometimes inside of the PDF, you have uh, characters that are not uh, that are Unicode characters but that are not like uh, basic Unicode characters and for some reason FPDF by default doesn't save in doesn't read the characters as UTF it reads them as uh, I think Latin 1 so that will give an error so one way to overcome this this problem is we need to uh, set we need to set a, a font name for this FPDF because the default font name in FPDF is uh, Latin one it, it, it uses uh, the Latin one encoding and we don't want that we, we want to set uh, UTF encoding uh, so just for good measure I'll go to Google Fonts and actually not Google Font uh, I'll download the Helvetica font and here free fonts family it doesn't matter where it's a completely free font So I'll download it. And here actually Okay, it extract them, I don't want them like that. Uh, here I'm gonna create a folder called fonts. And I'll extract them here. So we have Helvetica, Helvetica Bond, Bolt Oblique, Oblique, this is the Italic, Bolt Italic, Bolt, and I don't need these ones. So pretty much I'm going to be using these ones. I don't think we'll be using the Italic and the Bolt Italic, but I'll just leave them here. So what we need to do here We need to tell the FPDF that we'll be using these fonts and then we're going to set the encoding to UTF so that we don't get problems when uh, PDF cannot render UTF encoded characters because by default it, it encodes just Latin, Latin 1 encoding so everything else that is outside of that encoding will, will throw an error and it took me a while to find a solution to this but anyway so we're gonna create a couple of fonts here uh, and we use this add font now the first parameter is the, the name of the font and I'll use uh, Helvetica now the second parameter is the style and the first one will be the regular style so I'll pass nothing to it and then the font name and then I need to pass the the this the path to this font name. So main go to fonts and this is the font name. And then you need to type uni equals true, which means use the Unicode Unicode character set. Do not use the do not use the default the default uh, Latin one encoding use the Unicode and uh, let me add also the other ones so for all of them I'll use Helvetica we'll call them Helvetica now for the style the second one will be bold so this is the uh, this is the name for the third one this will be 
actually let me use this one first so this will be the italic for italic for the style I need to pass I and for the last one we'll use BI which is for bold and italic so this is the font name uh, we're not going to be using these two but I'll just add them just just in case maybe you need them okay now when the the fonts are added we need to instruct FPDF to create a web page so this will create a, a, a PDF page and then we need to start writing stuff inside of this uh, page so we we're gonna iterate over the data and we're gonna start adding text and images to this page now as you remember in data we have uh, different uh, keys, dictionary keys we have paragraphs, h3, headings, allies uh, but we also have uh, some data so for example the first one is the not this one the first one is the, the title then is the author then is the intro then maybe image if there is an image so here we're gonna start checking stuff so if the key is a title <coughs> so if it's a title I wanna print it in this orange color now set text color gives a color to the text and we need to call this function before writing the text uh, now we need to set the font now we already have the Helvetica font and then we need to pass the style and I want to use the, the bold style so I'm, I'm, I'm using this font because I want my title to be bold <coughs> And then we need to pass the size and I want to pass it size 34 now <coughs> actually let me show you before running this code so uh, before we move to the other ones let me save this and in order to save we call uh, PDF output and let me call it OK PDF so let's check this function and see what it's gonna do scrape data URL create PDF data so I'm gonna run this one and let's see if this will create uh, a PDF file Okay, that should be unit, not units. So let's try again. <coughs> okay we there is a new file here okay PDF I'm gonna open it and it doesn't seem to have written anything 
it's just an empty file. Uh, let me see. Add page. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. We forgot to write the text. So PDF cell. Uh, this this function is just to add text. Now the first parameter is the width, and I want the the width to be zero. Height fifty. Now item. get in this case title so this will get the value of the title align C stands for line center and line 1 means a single line ok let me run it again <coughs> did I close it Okay, so now as you see, here's the title, but uh, let me actually. So I need to close this one. Uh, let me make it bigger, like 64, for example. So if I run it again and open it you'll see that the title is uh, longer than the the width of the PDF file so this is not what we want to happen so in order to avoid it instead of saying cell uh, we're going to say multi-cell so multi-cell will wrap the, if the text is bigger than the, uh, the PDF file it will wrap it so when we're using multi-cell we cannot use line 1 uh, test again now if we open it we see it it's wrapped around and this is what we want to do Uh, now I don't want the size to be 64 I need to be 34 okay so pretty much we need to do something similar for the other ones uh, <coughs> get author what was it? authors Now for the text color, we'll pass black. Uh, zero, zero, zero is black. If set font, family, Helvetica. Uh, for the style, again, it will be black. And the size will be 14. Now we can use here cell because I don't think it will be bigger than the, the text, than the width of the PDF. <coughs> uh, it's actually 50. TXT. I will prepend it by writing by and then append the uh, get authors. Again, align it to the center and I need to say line one because this is not a multi cell, this is a single cell. We need to add this parameter. 
<coughs> so the cursor can move to the next one. Uh, okay. Elif item get intro. Let me copy this thing. Actually, the intro can be bigger, so I'll copy this one. Uh, for the text color, 57, 83. This is kind of a blackish color, Helvetica. I don't want it to be. Oh, okay, we'll leave it at 14. Um, this will be intro. Let's make it 500. I don't want to, to to get the whole width of the page. I want it to be 500, so it's kind of in the center. You guys will see it in a, in a minute. Okay, this is the multi cell. Uh, if it's a paragraph. paragraph we'll use the black color size 12 and no styles so this will use the default helvetica style it's not bold Let's make this 20. This is how height should be the, the cell, the multi cell. <coughs> and you guys can experiment if you want to. I just uh, want to place it like that. Okay. Uh, let me do one for the H3. And this shouldn't be intro, this should be paragraph tag here. And also for the paragraph, I don't want it to be a line at the center. Okay, uh, DH3. Uh, let me change the color. 46, 169, 223, Helvetica. Style B, size 12, with 0, height uh, 15, get item H. This is the Li. The LI uh, will make it, yeah. Actually, the heading 3 uh, needs to be bigger, so I'll make it 16 here. Uh, LI, I don't want it to be bold, so I'll remove this one. Height 12, 20. I'm sorry. 15. Get item LI. Now, before the LI, I want to put a dot. So here, you guys see that there's a dot for the LI. And I want to mark it as an LI. So in order to add a dot, uh, we're going to use this uni Unicode character, uh, 2022. This will create a dot, but not a dot as a full stop, but dot as a list item dot. <coughs> now, uh, one thing I also want to do is uh, after the intro here, 
I want to add an empty line. So I'll use the PDF cell, height equals 0, height equals 50. Uh, that's too much, height equals 20. TXT is an empty and line equals 1. Uh, let me add an empty line after the paragraph, after the H3 and after the LI. Okay, we wrote a lot of stuff, so let me see if everything is working correctly. Okay. So if I open it, okay, brief history. So I want this thing to be centered. Uh, okay, uh, the text looks okay. Okay, so here are the dots we are adding. So we want the text, this text to be black again. Because once we set the text color, we need to reset it again here. Zero, zero, zero. This is for the LA items. And I want the authors to be Set font. I give it a line. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure why this is not centered. Also, the title is not centered. Oh, okay. Should be capital C. Uh, the intro also, and actually these heading frees I don't want them to be centered. Li also don't want them to be centered. Okay, let me close the this one and run it again. <coughs> Okay, so the title is centered, author is centered, this is centered, and do you guys see this is the width is smaller than this one because we gave it 500 width. So we told, told them this cell for the intro. So here's the cell for the intro, we want the width, the max width to be 500. So this is 500 points. <coughs> so it's not getting all the width of the all the width of the, of the of the other text. Okay, so here are the heading freeze, all the paragraphs, and here are the list items. So the last thing we need to do is we need to add the images. And uh, now for the images, we'll get it's gonna get a little bit. Uh, it's not that hard. Elif item get IMG. Mm. So in order to add the images, first of all we need to uh, get the image name from the now this function has already downloaded the images, so I need to get the images. And in order to get the images, I need to know which image is which. So I need to get I need to get the name of the image. Uh, so again, so the value of the key image contains the URL. So I'll split it by the the slash, and I'll get the last one. Okay, this is the image name. Now, 
Do you remember guys we imported this image? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this image but not open it as in show but just open it in memory. Now I need to grab the image from the images folder so I need to join the images folder this folder the images folder with the image name so again I'll use os path join and I'll give it the folder name and the image name so this will open the image this image and believe it or not after I open the image I'll close it and the reason I close this image is um, because later you'll see that if you don't close the image we'll get an error <coughs> but now this image has information about the image even though we open it and then close it the image contains information about the this img variable contains information about the image and the information that we need about this image is its width uh, as you see some of these images are pretty huge and if I put them in a PDF the, it, will, it will show half of the image and the other half will be outside of the PDF file so we want to scale these images <clears throat> now I'm gonna get the image width and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check uh, if image width is less than 400 return the image width else return 400 so if the image is less than 400 for example if it's 300 pix pixels return 300 but if the image is bigger than 400 return 400 we, we want the maximum image to be 400 so it, it can fit nicely inside of our PDF file and that's why we use this uh, image open because when we open the image we're gonna get information about its width, its size, its format and a whole lot of stuff but currently we need only the image width and when I get the image width like I, I want to make sure that the image width is the maximum image, is image width is 400 pixels okay uh, and then when we're adding images inside of uh, PDF files we need to give it the, the X position and by default the X position is uh, open this link so let's say you want to add an image and if you don't specify the X position it will start from here so from the left border and uh, we want to pretty much um, put the images in the center so in order to push it, put the image in the center I know the width of the image I need to know the uh, the PDF dot W will give us the width of the PDF, and if I subtract the image width, and if I divide by two, this will give me the image height, the image uh, X position. So. I'm getting the, the width of the document, I subtract the image width and I divide by 2 because on both sides of the image there should be a margin so the image X will tell me the position where I need to start putting the image and then to add the image to the PDF we call the PDF, PDF image function and uh, we need to pass the full path to the image and uh, pretty much we need to pass this thing so we can get we join together the folder name and the image name and then 
the next parameter is the width of the image we already have the image width and the x is the image x now after the image I'm gonna add an empty an empty row okay let me close this one and let's try it out now <coughs> Okay. So here's the first image and this image was definitely more than 400 pixel but we scaled down to 400 pixels and it's in the center because we uh, the PDF size the PDF width we subtracted from the PDF width the size of the image divided by two so they're like these two and we get this coordinate so this is the coordinate that we got here it the x coordinate says starts from from this position <coughs> and there's the second one third one here's the fourth one and there's the fifth one and as you see the images are centered now centering text using a line center a line align C is very easy but for images you need pretty much to get the image width the PDF width subtract the image width from the PDF width divide by 2 and this will get give you the position of the so pretty much we are almost done guys uh, now this one last thing we want to do is uh, we want to convert this into a into a web interface so that we're not running this script but we can have a web interface where we can place the uh, the URL inside of an input field and then we can uh, you know do this using these controls so <coughs> before actually we do that I want to do some changes here for the for the output uh, First of all, I don't want to. I want to save the images. Uh, I mean, I want to save the PDFs using the title of the of the using the title of the the article. So, for example, a brief history of dinosaurs. I want it to be uh, all lower letters, and I want instead of spaces, I want to have to add uh, underscores here. And also, I don't want to save them inside here inside of the root folder. Uh, I want to create a folder called static. And inside of static, I want to place all the files. And a little bit later, when we're converting this thing into a web app, uh, into a web uh, interface, we'll be using this static folder when we're downloading the PDFs. So we'll be storing the PDFs in here and we'll download them from from the static okay so uh, so I'm gonna write PDF file name so I'll add it to the static folder and then I'll append the data now the data zero will be the title do you remember the first the first uh, the first item inside of the data list is a title so this will give me the title and then I need to get the value of the title so this thing will return a brief history of dinosaurs then I need to convert it to a lower case and I want to replace all spaces with underscores uh, and I'm checking my notes right now uh, you know what guys some of these some of these titles have like uh, punctuation marks like question marks 
and uh, when we convert them uh, the, uh, there is some encoding issue and they are encoded as uh, not like like punctuation marks but like uh, some weird symbols so we want to also run replace and if we have a question mark because some articles have these question marks in the title we want to remove them okay so this is the title we're cleaning the title and of course we need to add that pdf at the end uh, maybe that looks kind of ugly but it is what it is for the time being and then we're gonna call this pdf file name <coughs> now another thing i want to do is after i create the file name uh, after i create the pdf inside of this static folder i want to delete the images folder because i don't want to be storing because some of these images are pretty big I don't want to be storing them and if you want to store them you can just leave them but I will delete images folder and there is a very easy way to remove uh, folders using python using this shuttle uh, module so all you have to do is shuttle rm3 and pass the folder name. So fo folder name is images. And let me guys try to run it right now. So so I'm gonna run it, and what I what needs to happen is that. Uh, all the images will be created and then disappear and then this static folder will contain the, the, the new PDF okay did you see guys how the image folder disappeared so if I go to static I'll see a brief history of dinosaurs and when I open it you know it's pretty much the same thing okay so this thing is working and uh, let me remove this okay okay so the last thing we need to do <coughs> is to convert all this script inside of a inside of a web app so let me actually remove these things here Okay, so how do we use Flask to create web pages? So first of all, we need to import uh, a few modules from the Flask uh, module. Uh, So we we're importing these functions because we'll be using them from the Flask module. Uh, one of the functions that we import is request, which is different from this requests. So we use this to make uh, uh, we use this to make request for URLs, and this is inside the Flask. And uh, we'll see when we use this thing. <coughs> now, uh, the first thing we wanna do. Is we want to create an app, a Flask app, and this is how we do it. So this instructs Flask to create a Flask app, and in the very end.
and in the very end we're gonna add the following code So here we're creating the Flask app and here we are running the app. This is just the way Flask, Flask does its business. So <clears throat> let me run this thing again. And um, immediately we see that we get this message running on HTTP. This is the local host and this is the port 500. So if I copy this thing, and I open it in a, any browser I think actually we need to give it a, a route. <clears throat> so, in order to add routes, we we set the routes here using this this command at app dot route, and we pass the route. So this is the the home route, the home URL, and then we need to say at this at this route do this so uh, you can call this home and let's return hello now if we refresh it's still nothing the book mode Actually, here for run, let's pass the book equals true. Okay guys, so for some reason I, I just restarted the server. So control C will stop the server and then if you run it again and then we have the hello. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe something didn't load or something. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, so let me just explain it again. Uh, this line creates our app this runs our app and this we're telling it if there are any errors show them to us and uh, here we're creating different routes so uh, let's say I create another route uh, and uh, this is not a flask tutorial so actually let's not go there but uh, pretty much in our flask app we want to have two routes one is the home route and the other one is when we are getting the data for the article. So the first one will be the home route and instead of returning text like that we are actually going to return a template and uh, templates are very uh, very much used for, from, for, for Flask and in order to get these templates uh, we actually need to create them first. Uh, 
so in this folder here in, in, the, in the root we're going to create a folder called templates and this is the way how we need to call them this, this is the way how we, how we do that and uh, inside of the templates we're going to create two files index.html I mean files not uh, index.html and we're going to create another one called article html so let me load this and uh, <clears throat> we're going to be using bootstrap of course we don't have time to write uh, classes and stuff like that and if you go to download uh, compiled is that it? okay let me copy these ones so we're gonna create a basic template here <coughs> and this is the standard stuff for web websites so I will copy paste these links and actually we don't need a I don't believe we need a script we just need this CDN link for the bootstrap styles and let me call it scrape here okay so this is the index page now I'll go to components go to navbar and I will copy it Uh, it really doesn't matter what you copy. I'll copy this one and I'll paste it here and I'm gonna make it dark so I'll call this scrape uh, I don't think we need this thing. I don't even think we need the, the download the button. Actually, in order to call this template, so this index.html is part of the template folder. Here, instead of returning a string, uh, we're gonna return render template, and it's already imported from the Flask module. Render template and we're gonna render the index HTML so if I refresh this page now we have <coughs> now we have this uh, uh, this navbar over here and actually I, let me just add this Here, yeah, add the navbar again. Uh, so this is the home page, and then for these links over here, I'll put a link to Life Science so that we can open it. And not this here. And I'll give it a target blank. So this way we can <coughs> we can easily open the we can easily open the the site from the from here. Uh, refresh. Okay, and let me change this to dark. Refresh. And I'll change this to a scrape. 
scraper, just called scraper. So this will be the home page. And if I click this one, it will open <coughs> the life science web page in a in a different tab. Okay. Uh, now one thing we need to add to the to this home page is I want to add a search like a search uh, a search input field here. So I like I like the container. Uh, and I'll center everything in the center. I'll add a row. And these are bootstrap classes. And for the margin top, I'll add three. You'll see in a minute what it does. And here I'm gonna put a, a form. So let me come to navbar and forms. And let me just grab a I think this will. Oh, there are diffs. Okay, anyway, I'll just just write it. Uh, so we're gonna add a form here. Uh, for the action, we'll code it in a in a second. For the method, it will be a post method. Uh, class will be. LG um, is it free like that? Okay. We'll have an input of type text. Form control URL placeholder enter URL and we want to make this required. Now <coughs> What we're doing is we're creating a form and uh, we're giving it a class of LG which means it will it will be a like span on big devices. These, these are um, device classes for different devices it will, look, it will look different and if you have never used Bootstrap don't worry about it you can just copy these classes uh, so actually let me show you how it will how it will look <coughs> So here's the is our form. We have this uh, input field, and it's centered in the uh, it's centered in the in the middle using this M auto. And uh, this is our input field. So what we need to do is add a button. Uh, So button we have a class of BTN, BTN primary. These are bootstrap classes. I'm not making them up. And uh, we'll have type submit. And we'll call it scrape. So refresh, and there we have the scrape button. Currently, it does nothing. Also, the field is required. So okay. <coughs> It goes to a non-existing your I mean we'll, we'll call the functionality for the scraping. Okay, so on this home page, this is what we're gonna have. Just the, the form and the scraping and the scrape button. Now we need to create another uh, another route and I'll call this route uh, article because for, for this route, we want to have a 
uh, we're actually gonna be presenting the readable view of the article and also the, the, the download PDF button here. So again, when we wanna create a route app route, and we'll call this thing uh, article. Now, <clears throat> besides that, we wanna access this article route through the post method because here when we are submitting this URL we're submitting it using the post method and again if you have never created websites probably this seems kinda weird what's going on here but pretty much there are two ways of passing data <coughs> one is post data the other one is get data and post data is uh, kinda hidden so you don't see it in the URL it happens under the hood <coughs> <coughs> okay, so we need to say that this uh, this route is can be used only with post requests. So we need to pass method equals post. <coughs> now this this page article page will accept the URL from the home page. So this name URL will be passed the parameter the parameter this URL parameter needs to be passed to the uh, article page. <coughs> so we need to grab it and we'll use this uh, request uh, which is part of Flask uh, request form URL. So this URL comes from this name URL. This name URL will pass the value of the input field. So whatever we put in the input field and click scrape will be attached to the URL and here we're gonna catch it and we'll save it in a URL variable. <coughs> Now we'll get the result and we'll call the scrape data and pass the URL because this function we have already written it we're passing the URL and we're saving it in that uh, result variable <coughs> then we're going to create the PDF uh, file and we'll pass it the result <coughs> So on this data that scrape data returns will be saved in result. We'll pass it to the create PDF, which will create the PDF file, and it will download the images, <coughs> create the PDF file inside of the static folder, and uh, delete the image folder also. Okay, and the last thing we need to uh, we need to load the template. So in this case we'll call the temple called article HTML and also for that we want to pass the result because we'll be using this uh, we'll be using this data from the result inside of the article and we also need to pass the PDF file name <coughs> so let me copy everything from the index and paste it in the article And uh, here we don't need this thing. So we want this, we want the navbar. And then here we need to write the, the markup for the article page. <coughs> so we'll be passing the result and the PDF file name. So let's start actually with the with the result first. So in Flask we can use we can use uh, variables and we can check if this result exists. If result 
and this is just the way Flask does things. And then we need to close end if. So if there is a result, we're gonna create a container. We're gonna create a row and we'll put a margin top of three, which means there'll be a <coughs> margin between the results and the navbar. And then we need to We need to present a readable version of this of, of this uh, data that's stored in the result variable, and then we need to use check uh, what kind of data we're getting. So if item, oh wait a minute, uh, before we do that, we need to loop over the result because remember result is an array of dictionaries. So I'm gonna loop over all the items, over all the dictionary items inside of this inside of this list. So for item in the result and for so here what we're gonna start checking if item is title. If item is title, I need to put it in, inside of a he heading one. <coughs> and then to get the value, I need to put these uh, curly braces. And for the heading one, I, I want to add some bootstrap classes like uh, text center. Let me copy this thing. If item, then is the authors. Now for the authors, uh, they'll be inside of a P class, text center. Okay. Then I have the intro. <coughs> and intro again will be class of P it will be text center and also class added the class of lead which will make it bigger and will kind of st stand out if item is a paragraph uh, I don't want any classes to the paragraph so if it's a standard paragraph, just show it, sh just show the paragraph. And I just realized I need to change this. This must be intro, authors, this is title, this is the paragraph. What happened here? Okay. <coughs> okay. If it's uh, heading free, This needs to be heading free, heading free. Uh, classes uh, no, I'm not gonna center it. If item is list item. Shall we? put it inside of UL <coughs> and finally if the item is an image now the image this will be this will this will give me the mm, the URL of the image so for the source I'll use the image. This will give me the image. <coughs> for the alt, I'll just call it image. Now for the class, I'll add a class of image fluid. 
because the image might be bigger than the container this will uh, fit the image inside of the container so it doesn't go because some of the images are too big too wide <coughs> okay uh, anything else okay let me actually test this one okay there are no errors so let's try with this one I will place it here oh uh, oh sorry sorry about that so here in the index we forgot something <coughs> every form needs to have an action and the action needs to tell where it needs to go uh, now in order to uh, we need to send it to the to the article URL and in order to do that we're gonna use something called uh, URL for this is a flask function which will get the URL of the uh, of the following parameter so article uh, okay no errors okay so let me refresh this now if you inspect you will see that the action points to this article so if I click scrape here we have the all the information <coughs> All the information, and actually, if you check the, yeah, we're scraping the same one. So we have now the last thing we need to do is we need to add a download a PDF download button. So here in the article, so between the navigation and the results. I'm gonna add a container with a row these are bootstrap classes that will just look at uh, show the, the download button in, in the center of the page <coughs> now the link will say uh, download PDF now for the href, uh, the PDFs will be in this static folder and this will be the name of the PDF file and the name of the PDF file is passed here. So when we are rendering the template, article template, we are passing the PDF file. So I already have this file, uh, I already have the name of this file. So here for the href, again I will use the URL for function. I'll say go to the static folder and uh, for the file name I'll give it PDF file name because this parameter is passed to the is passed to the uh, is passed from the route <coughs> now I'll also go and get uh, the class of BTN btn success and last but not least I'll add uh, this download attribute which tells tells the browser what is the preferred name so for the preferred name I'll use the this PDF file name that I already passed okay and let me try it out now uh, his history of dinosaurs, scrape file name PDF file name uh, 
URL for static uh, I'm not sure what is happening so this is the problem ok let me check if these are correctly set PDF file name, PDF file name. <coughs> oh, you know what, guys? So here, when we're creating the PDF. PDF needs to return the file name and currently our function doesn't return the file name it just creates the file name it just creates the PDF file deletes but it doesn't return so the file name uh, so let me run it like this uh, let me start restart the server <coughs> okay. So Okay, I I made a mistake here. Okay. Let's try again. <coughs> Okay, so we have the the article. Everything looks fine. Images, titles, whatever. Now this, this, and I already see that it's pointing to static slash static. So it cannot download it because it's pointing to static static. Uh, and. We, we should return the file name without the static one so let me just grab this thing so I don't want to return the, the folder because we are already accessing the folder here we will tell it to look in the static folder and we just need to pass the file name so here we are returning just the name of the file and the extension so hopefully this time it's gonna work <coughs> okay download PDF okay it points to static and the file name and there is the file name if I open it with the browser everything looks fine okay let's grab a Let's grab some some uh, different article. Okay, China builds artificial. Okay, let's scrape it. Okay, here the images. Okay, it's a short article short article now you see this related content it's not here we don't have this related content now let's download it as PDF open it and there it is China if I check my uh, static folder I can see China builds I can have the, the same article here Okay, well, uh, I know this is not, guys, a perfect tutorial, but uh, I hope you learned something new. And uh, this is for now. I hope to see you in our next tutorial. See you guys soon. Bye bye.